Hello guys, uh, welcome to Koa Academy and in this video we'll be talking about a very important concept in economics called balance of payments. Uh, so in this video, the scheme of this video will be that first we'll be talking about the definition of balance of payments, then components of balance of payments which include current account and capital account, then we'll be talking about a specific terminology uh, called balance of payment crisis, what is it and uh, when it happens. Uh, under what condition it happens, then we'll be talking about current account deficit and whether it is a good or a bad thing. So let's jump on to the definition. Now, balance of payments, remember that it's simply money coming into a country from abroad. And remember when money comes into a country from abroad, when a country exports something. So when you export, for example, cars or even IT services, the money comes into your country. That is foreign exchange comes into your country minus all the money going out of the country during the same period. Now, when does money go out of your country? When you import something, for example, uh, if you are importing um, petrol, okay, when you are import importing fuel, for example, then the money is going out of the country. So money, go money going out of the country minus money coming into the country uh, it's simple. This this equation is called balance of payments. Now, if the money going out of the country is more, then it's called balance of payment deficit. That is the foreign exchange, net foreign exchange is going out of the country. Moving on, uh, components of the balance of payments. There are two components of balance of payments, current account and capital account. Now, current account includes visible trade or physical goods. Okay. Now, this could be simple, like if a country is exporting cars, uh, then it comes under the ambit of uh, physical or tangible goods. The other component is, of course, in, invisible trade, and this includes export of services, uh, for example, banking services, advertising services. For example, if banks if banks are providing international credit, then this results in the uh, in the you know flow of uh, for foreign exchange. So this is this is also part of current account. Then it also includes other intangible goods, for example, copyrights. Then it includes dividends and interest payments. Uh, remember, these are all uh, payments which are going, which are which are leaving the country, which are across the borders of the country. Uh, other components of current account include private transfers, and this includes uh, money trust money sent home by expatriate workers. And this is a very important source of finance for the developing countries, which which you know the majority of the workforce, most of the workforce, is is in developed countries, and they send money home in term in in terms of remittances. So it's a very very um, you know important part of the foreign exchange of the developing countries. Uh, other other is other component of the current account is official transfers now this includes international trade for example international uh, bodies like world bank international monetary fund and even international countries like uh, united states they give aid to different countries and that is also a, a source of foreign exchange uh, for for the developing countries and this is also part of the current account of course current account is part of the bigger picture which is balance of payments now Capital account, the other, other part of the balance of payment uh, is capital account and it includes long term capital flows, which is essentially money invested in the foreign firms. Now, the example of this is, you know, uh, for example, if Suzuki, uh, it's, it's a Japanese company, if it, it, if, if it it's establishes a plant in some other country, then of course, in the, in the long run, that plant will uh, that that plant will uh, you know make money for example if if the plant is about the assembling of vehicles so the profit that is coming into the country that will you know uh, make the country rich but at the same time when the plant is being the money is being invested the receiving country and uh, that, that the receiving country will receive international you know foreign exchange so the foreign exchange reserves at the time of you know uh, outflow of the uh, capital flows will will be good for the receiving country but in the long run of course when that when those firms you know repatriate the profits then the uh, the you know parent country which initially made the investment benefits so the short term capital flows include money invested in foreign currencies by international speculators now these speculators uh, and money changes you know they they take advantage of the you know, mispricing in the currencies for a short while, and they, they as as soon as the profit is you know shrinking, a profit has shrink, they just move out of and you know uh, take away their uh, money with them. 
Uh, now, what is current account deficit? This is a very important terminology and you must have heard about it in the newspapers. And this is simply value of goods and services imported into a country, of course, which results in outflow for an exchange. And if this goods and services being imported is greater than the value of goods and services being exported, then this is called a current account deficit because ultimately it, it results in net outflow of foreign exchange. So this is a current account deficit situation. Now, is it a bad thing or a good thing? Well, a country can sustain a current account deficit for many years without its economy suffering if the deficit is tiny compared to its national income or wealth, or in other words, its GDP. Now, take the example of US, for example, its GDP, its, its current account deficit or our balance of payment deficit has been hovering around 5% since uh, early 2000s, but US has been able to do well because the, the fundamentals of the United States economy, which is, it's a very export oriented economy. And especially when it comes to services sectors, uh, you, 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 US is, is, is very, very, you know, self-sufficient when it comes to uh, generating, gen generating uh, financial reserves through export. So it doesn't matter, the US can still sustain current balance of payment deficit because it has the means to sustain, to, to make good the, the outflow of that capital. So balance of payment is not necessarily, balance of payment deficit is not necessarily a bad thing. You know, uh, another another area when, when it is good is when the deficit is due to firms importing technology and other capital goods from abroad. For example, if, if a developing country is importing high, high tech, you know, cutting at technology from a country, of course, uh, for the time being, the uh, foreign exchange will drain out of the country, but it might be good for it because in the long run, the productivity uh, of the, that particular country will increase and it will become more competitive in the international markets. And ultimately it will, it will start exporting goods and this will result in inflow of uh, inflow of foreign exchange in the long run. But a deficit is bad when it has to be financed by public sector. For instance, when the Russian government failed to uh, pay the interest on its foreign debt in, you know, around August 1998, it found it impossible to borrow any money in the international financial markets. And it was also not able to increase taxes in its local economy or find anyone within Russia willing to lend the government. This truly was very bad. And this, this sort of deficit is, 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 is a bad thing, okay? Now, balance of payments crisis. A balance of payments crisis now, which is often co called currency crisis, occurs when a nation is unable to pay for its essential imports or service its external debt repayments. Now, this is typically accompanied by rapid decline in the value of the affected nation's currency. Now, this situation arises when, you know, countries, for example, are not able to generate sufficient foreign exchange to pay for essential imports, like, for example, fuel fuel payments, uh, developing countries often, uh, which, which are running deficits, they, they find it very difficult to uh, even, even cater to the needs of the economy in terms of its fuel consumption. So that is a balance of payment crisis and is, it is very bad. And, you know, another, another you know, uh, situation is when the country has to pay back uh, its international debt by, by, you know, borrowing even more debt. So servicing of debt by, uh, by, by borrowing more, you know, debt is, is a very, a very, very, very tricky situation. And it's also called a balance of payment crisis because foreign exchange is moving out of the country. And it's, it's, it's very uh, bad situation. And we can, we can call it in real terms, balance of payment crisis. Remember balance of payment crisis is simply when the balance of payment, when balance of payment deficit is of so great proportion and magnitude that a country is is literally out of the out of the it out of its foreign currency reserves, and so that it can even not pay its essential imports or services its external debts. So that's it for now. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to get more videos on finance, investment, taxes, and many other things. Thank you.